What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the simulator series. In today's episode, we are going to be creating the Game Pass Shop GUI. Now as always, if this video does help you guys out or you do enjoy it, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn the post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox vomit content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon if you guys like to gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode. There's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's get into it. To showcase the exact GUI that we're going to be replicating today, inside of Eating Simulator, we can look on the right hand side of the screen and we see we have this red shop button now when we click it it opens up with a gui and it has a lot of different game passes and also developer products as well so in this episode we're going to be creating the different displays with all these different products inside of them heading back inside of studio let's start by creating the shop button so let's open up our starter gui inside of the button gui inside of the button holder and let's go ahead and duplicate the settings button we can then rename the button to shop and what we're going to quickly do is we're going to set up the layout order now as you can see in the image the buttons are lined up with cell being on top settings being on the bottom and shop being somewhere in the middle so what we want to do to make sure that they're all displayed correctly is we want to actually modify the layout order now the layout order for the cell button considering that's going to be the first or the top button to be displayed will be set to zero and then for settings we actually want to set the layout order to four because we want that to be the last button displayed and then for example cell would be zero go small would be one shop would be two and codes would be three and then that's why settings would be four so for shop we're going to set this to two and now that button is displayed in the middle what we then want to do is we want to then resize this a little bit so it seems like it's the same width as the cell button and then we want to make it a little bit taller that might be too big but you guys can make it however you want to what we then want to do is we want to change the background color to a nice little red and i have this preset red right here so that looks pretty good then if we open up the text button we can see that we have the icon and the title what we want to do is we want to shrink the title down a little bit and then we also want to set the text to shop and then also for the icon icon they probably use an image label similar to how they do for the settings but we are just using a text label instead of inserting an image so we're just going to find an emoji of a house or like a shop front and i'm just going to use this house emoji because it looks pretty similar so there we go we now have the shop bun pretty much created we might even want to make this just a we might even want to make the text a little bit smaller as well and then let's make sure that we center it so that looks pretty good let's check in the mobile view and inside of the mobile view it looks pretty good but if we see they're actually spaced significantly apart and we want to fix that inside of the ui list layout we can see that we actually set the offset of the padding and not the scale so what we want to do is want to set the scale and i think like probably 0.05 would be good let's check this okay there's probably like maybe 0.1 is probably pretty good i think that actually looks pretty perfect so there we go we now got the bun set up now that we have the bun set up we're done with the bun gui what we then want to do is we want to then duplicate the shop gui that we made quite a few episodes ago and we're just going to put that into the starter gui we'll then rename this to game pass shop and then let's also enable this so we can see it now that we have this enabled we can open up the gui and we're going to delete both the confirmation and the shadow frame and now we're just left with the main frame itself so we can delete the info frame we can delete the buy all button and the next page button and the pages all three of those as well so now we should just be left with the exit button the container frame the category frame and the background frame which is the background for the container what we now want to do is we want to change the background color of the main frame to this sort of reddish color then what we're going to do is is we're also going to set the background color of the background frame to just a little bit of a darker version of that color. I think that's pretty good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select both the background and the container frame, and we're going to stretch it out a little bit so that we can kind of fill in the room or where it should be. And we want to leave a little bit of room on the left side for our buttons. And I think that's pretty good. Then we'll stretch it up a little bit and we'll stretch it further down. So I think that's pretty good. Then what we want to do is inside of the settings UI, inside of the frame, we want to duplicate the subtitle and the title and we want to drag them into our frame right here now the reason for that is because if we see this is positioned and sort of created perfectly as much as it should be and all we have to do is adjust it a little bit so for the title we just need to adjust the background frame to be the same red as this one and there we go now it looks perfect except for the buns that are right there but we'll move those in a minute and then of course we want to change the title text from settings to shop and then for the subtitle we want to change this text to buy these items and become even fatter and there we go now we have the title and subtitle set up we can then close the settings and now we want to look at the category frame and we actually want to readjust this a little bit rather than it being very wide we want it to more so be tall and look sort of something like this but don't worry we will adjust how this actually looks in a second so for the fill direction we want it to be horizontal and then for the cell size rather than stretching the entire y since we're gonna have four buns we probably want them to stretch a 
about 0.24. So that's like 24th of the way down. And then for the X, we can set this to one because we want them to stretch fully to the left and the right. So now we can see the buns are coming along pretty well. If we want to make these bigger, we could stretch them out a little bit more. And we do want them to be underneath of the subtitle. So I think that looks pretty good. Additionally, what I want to do is I want to resize this entire frame to make it just a little bit bigger because I think they have theirs pretty wide. And now since we did that, what we're going to do is we're going to reposition this and make sure that it is centered perfectly. So there we go. That looks pretty good. I think what we'll then do is we'll also move this down just a little bit more. So that looks perfect. Let's also hit it with a mobile view real quick so we can make sure everything's looking good. Nothing looks out of place. So that's great. Now for the category buttons, let's start setting these up. So what we'll do is we'll delete all buttons except for one and we'll start with this one. The first one that we want to have is the passes. So we're just going to name this passes. Then for the category, we want to set the text to passes in all capitals. And then we also want to move this towards the top as that's where they have it at. So something like that. I think that's pretty good. We could even stretch it out a little bit wider. And let's of course make sure that we center that just like that. And then for the icon, we want to move this down a little bit further. So probably something like that is probably pretty good. Of course, they most likely use the image label, but we're just going to use a text label. And we'll just leave the icon as is for the actual symbol because realistically, this is just a placeholder. The last thing that we'll do is we'll change the background color of the passes to sort of a little bit of a lighter orange. So I think that's pretty good. So now that we have passes, this is going to be our first button. What we can then do is we can duplicate it. So now we have our second button. So we'll just call it pets for now. And we want to set the category text from passes to ultra pets. So there we go. And then we also want to modify the background color of this bun to be a purple. So I think something like that is pretty good. We also want to adjust the layout order of this. So from zero to one, so that this always appears below passes. We'll then duplicate the pets bun and rename this to coins. We can once again, adjust the layout order from one to two. And then also we'll adjust the background color to a bluish sort of color. So I think something like that's pretty good. Then inside of here, we want to adjust the category text to coins. And then one more time, we will duplicate this new bun and we'll rename this to boosts. We'll set the layout order from two to three. The background color will be a little bit of a darker orange. So I think that's pretty good. And then of course, for the category, we want to set that to boosts. Now that all looks perfect. Now what we want to do is inside of the shop folder, inside of the manager, we have a template right here. And what we'll do is we'll duplicate that and put that inside of our container frame so that we already have a pre-made template basically what a template actually is. Now, what we're going to do with this is we're actually going to have a container for each category. So we can rename the container frame from container frame to passes container. And this will be the specific container for the passes. And then once we finish this, we'll also duplicate that modify for the ultra pets, the coins and boosts, And then we'll have a container specifically set up for each of the different categories. So let's go inside of the template that we have right now. And we don't really need a holder. We could just drag and drop all this stuff directly into the template and delete the holder. We can also delete delete one of the UI corners because we just dragged it from the other one. We can also delete the viewport frame as well because we won't be using that. We'll also rename the image label from image label just to image to make it simpler for us. So now what we're going to do is let's set the image to visible so that we can see whatever the temporary image currently is. We'll center it as well because we want it to be in the center. Actually, we probably should have resized it first, but I think the sizing honestly isn't that big bad. Maybe we'll just make the image a little bit smaller. And now let's also recenter it once again. So there we go. Now for the item name, what we're going to do is we're going to resize this a little bit, just make it a tiny bit smaller. So there we go. And then let's also center this as well. That looks great. And then we'll change the text to the first item that they have in their shop, which is infinite food. And additionally, their text seems like they actually do have a bit of a stroke in there. So we're going to set the transparency to zero so we can actually see the stroke. And maybe we'll actually set to like 0.5. So it's a little bit of a lighter stroke or point. Eight. I think 0.7 is pretty good. It's like a light stroke. You can't really see it too much. And that's how they have it. Now, rather than calling this item name, we'll just call this title and then we'll duplicate this and we will just bring it down a good amount. So probably like right there, I'd say maybe we make it a little bit bigger. And then we are going to rename this to price and we'll set the text of this to 799 space R dollar sign. And that's exactly how they have it. Then we just want to change the text color from white to a lightish 
screen. So I think something like that's pretty good. Now, the final thing that we want to do is inside of the template, we want to add a UI gradient to this so that we can adjust the background color. Now for the template background color, we're just going to set this to white so that we can easily modify it with the gradient. That's what we're using the gradient for is actually to modify the background color. And you'll see how we're doing that in a second. If we look at how they have their game passes set up in the shop, it looks like the top of the item template is red and then it transitions to a yellowish color. So what we're going to do is on the left side of our UI gradient, we're going to change the color to that reddish color that we want. So I think like that. And then on the right side, we are going to change it to sort of a yellowish color. I think like that maybe like an orange i think that looks pretty good then let's click in the middle and drag the slider down further which means that the red is a little bit more dominant than the orange and then we'll close that and now for the rotation we want this to be 90. so now we can see the red at the top and that transitions to the orange but it doesn't look exactly how they have it so what we'll try to do is maybe drag this back a little bit further kind of something like that i don't know it's a little hard to get it perfectly right and make sure it blends all correctly i'm not great with colors and stuff Stuff like that but i still think that looks decent i don't think it's exactly how they have it but i think it's enough to show you as an example of how you can use the ui gradient to adjust the background color so if you guys want to make it differently you guys certainly can the same goes for the image as well this image is simply just a placeholder they have a circular image rather than this big kind of ugly square looking image the final thing that we want to do is we want to delete the equipped text label inside of here because we're not going to be using it and now we're pretty much done with the template for the passes at least let's go ahead and duplicate this template played a couple of times and see how it fits in the shop. So in their shop, they have nine items displayed at once, three in each row, and that's how ours looks. Now, if we wanted to adjust the size at all, like if we wanted them to look a little bit taller, what we could do is instead of this being set to 0.134, we could set this to like 0.15, and now we can see they all look a little bit taller. Of course, if we wanted them to be a little bit thinner, we could set this from 0.32 to 0.3, and then rather than having this aligned on the left side, we could also align it in the center, and now that looks pretty good as well. I'm not going to do that because I honestly think these all look good as they already are so I'm not going to make any adjustments to the grid layout but I'm just showing you guys for example if that's what you wanted to do you certainly can now that we're done with the passes container we're then going to create the ultra pets container so we're going to duplicate the passes container we'll set the visibility to false and then we'll rename one of the passes container to pets container now the pets are certainly a little bit different so we are going to adjust the UI grid layout now for the pets we want two pets displayed in each row so we could set this to be about 0.47 seven maybe so that's pretty wide let's also duplicate one of these templates so we can just see how they look let's actually duplicate four so we can see how four of them look what we can then do is we can then increase the y from 0 0.134 to 0 0.19 i think is perfect what we could also do if we wanted to we could make these a little bit thinner so like 0.4 for example and then we could also center them as well it really all depends on how you guys want to set up your shop i think this looks perfectly fine so if you guys want to copy my properties for the cell size and the cell padding that's what we're going to be using for the pets container so for the pets template we're going to open up the template for the pets they don't really have a specific title what they do actually have though are the stats displayed at the top left corner of each pet so we'll rename title to food stat and we'll set the text to our food emoji times 100.0k and that's exactly how theirs looks and then we'll kind of stretch it to be the top right corner how they have it as well we'll duplicate this and we will rename it to money stat and we'll set the text of this from food we'll just change the food icon to our money icon just like that and then we just want to move it a little bit further down so i think setting the position to point two on the scale looks pretty good if we check on mobile they don't overlap or anything so that looks perfect now for the image, the image does display underneath of the stats, like the pet is literally overlapped by the stats. So this doesn't look good to me, and especially doesn't look good because of the actual image itself, but that is how they have it. I think we just might want to adjust the size of the image a little bit so it doesn't hang down so low. Then for the price, what we'll do is we'll make this a little bit smaller as well, but we'll drag it towards the bottom, and then we'll make it a little bit smaller, and let's make sure that we position this in the center, so just like that. Then for the background, color we're going to set the transparency to zero and we are going to set the background color to sort of like a gray but maybe just a little bit darker so i think that looks good and then for the text we'll set this to 19 underscore 900 space rs then that looks just like how theirs is and then i don't think they have any stroke on this so we're going to make the stroke completely transparent so that we can't see it so i think that looks good but i really feel like we need to expand this so that it's just a bit taller so we'll try to set this like 0.25 and i think even that 
looks better. Additionally, I don't think we want it as wide. So we'll set that to like 0.45. And now we want to readjust the stats a little bit. So we'll just make them a little bit longer horizontally. And I think actually, I mean, they actually stretch out pretty far. I didn't even realize. And then let's set the alignment from center to left for the X alignment. And that looks good. And then for the image, we might want to even stretch this up a little bit taller. I don't know how you guys are feeling, but if you guys have pet images, you can obviously change or stretch the image however large you want it to be. Additionally, we're going to adjust the gradient a little bit. We're going to make our gradients just a little bit simpler. So we're going to delete the middle color and we're going to set this side to a little bit of a darker white. And then the first color, which is the red right now, we will set this to a complete bright white. And that's kind of how their gradient is. They have a gradient set for each pet, which we'll also do. And I'll show you guys how to do. Now, the final thing that I realized is for the background color, this actually has a border size pixel of one. We want to set that to zero. So there is no border pixel at all. I almost forgot about that. And we did catch that luckily. Additionally, for the food stat and the money stat, it looks like their stroke is pretty large. So we want to set the transparency of that to zero. So it stands out completely. Let's go ahead and duplicate the template a couple of times so that we can see how it looks. And although it doesn't look exactly like how theirs is, where four is displayed at once, it still does look pretty good in my opinion. And of course, you can adjust the UI grid layout to make it display however you really want to. So let's go ahead, delete all those templates, and we're good with that. Next, we're going to create the coins container. And what we're going to do is we are going to set the visibility of the pets container to false. And we're going to duplicate the passes container because the passes container is very similar to the coins container. So we're going to rename passes container to coins container. And then we're going to set the visibility to true for this. So inside of the coins container, let's open up the template. And all we're going to do is adjust the title text from infinite food to plus 276.4k space coins. And now that looks good. And we'll also adjust the price from 799 to 79 RS exactly like that. And I think that's all good. The only other thing that we might want to do is maybe we want to resize the image just a tiny bit. Like it looks like their image is not being overlapped by any of the text and it looks like it's rather small. So something like that. And then let's also make sure that we center it. So boom, just like that. I think that's pretty good. Maybe we even move the price down just a little bit bit so like that and there we go that's pretty much all that we needed to do let's duplicate the template a couple of times so that we can make sure okay it looks like we're displaying about nine at once so that looks all good and then we can set the visibility of the coins frame to false now the last container that we need to create is the boost one so we're going to duplicate the coins container we'll rename this from coins container to boost container we'll set the visibility to true now configuring the boost template this is probably going to be the most dynamic one that we've made so far currently we can delete price label because we're not going to use that that one then for the image we want to resize it a little bit and we want to position it towards the left side of the screen and it mostly takes up the bottom left half sort of something like this i would say then for the title we want this to take up about half of the space as well something like that probably and we're going to set the title to times five luck we then want to add a frame inside of here and we're going to rename this to status and then for the size we want to set that to scaled and we pretty much just want to position it very similar to how we have the title set up, but it'll go from sort of the center of the screen towards the right side. So that is pretty good. We're going to duplicate the UI corner from the template and put that inside of the status. And we'll change this from 0.1 to maybe 0.3. That looks pretty good. And then the background color of this, we want to be a grayish color. So that looks good. Now, finally, we need to add a text label inside of there. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the title text label, and we're going to set the position to zero. And for the size it is going to stretch the entire width and height and then the actual text itself is going to be not owned and it's not going to have any stroke so we're going to set the tra transparency of the stroke to one and then we'll also rename the text label from title to status as well we could resize this a little bit more if we for instance say want this to be a little bit smaller and we want the status to be a little bit dragged out something like that that could work too additionally let's modify the ui grid layout real quick so rather than being 0.32 we'll make it like 0.45 and then the height is probably honestly fine i don't think we really need to adjust that let's duplicate the template twice three four times and that all looks pretty good i think for this though instead of it being aligned horizontally to the left we want it horizontally aligned into the center and we could even make them a little bit larger too if we wanted to like 475 that makes it even bigger i think that's a pretty good size right there so then let's just go ahead and delete all those other templates and just leave this one now for this the background color actually seems to 
be one whole color. It doesn't seem like it uses a gradient. So we're going to delete the gradient and then just set the background color to a green like that. Additionally, for the title, the stroke transparency seems to be zero. So we're going to set that accordingly. And then also the text alignment seems to be left aligned for the X and not centered. Now we're going to duplicate the status frame and we're going to rename this one to prices. And then what we'll do is we will drag it down mostly towards the bottom. And I think that's pretty good. Now for the background transparency, we're going to set that to one because we don't want to see the background at all. We'll also remove the UI corner as well. And then what we're going to actually do is we're going to add a UI grid layout to this. And we'll also add in another frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the prices frame, put that directly inside of here, remove this grid layout, and we'll also delete this status text label as well. And we're going to rename prices to 10 and we'll see why in a minute. So this might be a little bit confusing, but this is what we have inside of the template. We have the prices frame with the UI grid layout inside of it. And then also another frame named 10. And then inside of that, we have status, which is a text label for the UI grid layout. What we're going to do is we're going to set the cell padding just to zero for right now. Now for the cell size, we want it to stretch entirely through the x and then about 0.28 through the y so now we're going to rename status from status to duration and the text is going to be 10 mins and now let's see the size of this so rather than it being the entire x we want it to be about 0.5 five probably so maybe like 0.48 we'll see how it goes we might even stretch it out a little bit more then we want to actually add a text button inside of here and then let's just set the size to scale and then we want this to go on the right half of the frame so something like that looks pretty good and then we're going to set the background transparency of this to like a pretty bright even brighter green although those greens seem the exact same so we're going to actually change this to be i guess just a little bit of a darker green so it's easier to see then we want we don't want any border on this so we'll set that to zero for the text. We don't want any text to be displayed inside of there. And then we also want to add a UI corner to that as well. So we'll duplicate the one from our template and put it in there as well. We'll set this to like 0.3. So that looks good. And then we'll copy duration, put that inside of the text button. And then for the size, we are going to stretch it to the full size of the button. And we're going to set the text to 149. Now that looks pretty good. So we'll rename this text label from duration to price. And we'll also rename the button to buy. Additionally, for the duration we actually want the stroke to be pretty visible so we're going to set that to zero and that looks pretty good what we're then going to do is we're going to stretch out the prices a little bit further towards the left so i think that looks great and we'll also stretch it out a little bit further towards the right so that looks pretty good now that we have that we're going to duplicate the 10 frame and see how it gets placed next so we want to modify the ui grid layout and we want to actually modify the padding at least for the y a little bit so we'll try like 0.1 i think a little bit smaller would be even better so point 0.05. I think that's good enough. So we'll try that for now. Let's add three. And okay, that looks pretty perfect. So yeah, we got the padding all down, which is great. Then for this next frame, instead of it being called 10, we'll call this 30. And then what we want to do is we want to adjust the price of this to be 399 and we want the duration to be 30 minutes. Then finally, we'll duplicate this one more time and we'll set this to 60. And then once again, we're gonna change the price from 399 to 699 and the duration will be one hour. So there we go, we now have that all set up. If we wanted to, we could stretch the status a little bit further towards that direction. And then we also could round its corners a little bit more, so point four. And then we kind of have the text sticking out a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll decrease the size of this two point eight and then we'll also make sure that we center it so there we go now that looks pretty good let's also hit this with the mobile view to make sure everything looks good which it all does perfect except the only thing that doesn't actually look good is the category frame so inside of the ui grid layout i thought i fixed this but maybe i didn't or maybe the changes didn't get saved so for the padding we're going to set this to scale for the x it doesn't really matter but for the y we'll try 0.1 for right now that's too large so we'll try point that's still too large 0.015 i think 0.015 is actually perfect let's take a look at this from the pc view that looks perfect so there we go we're done with the category frame now let's go ahead and duplicate this like two or three more times and now we see all these are laid out and they all do look pretty good i don't see anything wrong with them and i think they are actually pretty perfect now the final thing that we actually need to do is we actually want to convert this text button into a frame and we should be able to easily do that by creating a frame and just taking everything from inside of that button 
button, pasting it into there, and then deleting the button. And then of course we also need to change the background transparency to a, we're just gonna set it to a dark green like that, and that looks pretty good. We also might just honestly want to align the text centered, and we also want to make it a little bit smaller so that it doesn't overlap the status at all, and I think that's pretty perfect. So let's quickly go through and view all of our containers once again. So we have the booster container, which is done. Let's go ahead and check out the coin container, which also looks pretty perfect, so we're done with that. Then we have the pets container, which also looks all perfect. And then finally, we have the passes container as well, which also looks perfect too. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll start actually scripting the GUI. Hopefully this video did help you guys out. As always, if it did, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon if you'd like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode. There's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.